Okay, hi, this is Matt again, and now we're ready to start talking about how we can represent networks and talk about their properties. And in terms of simplifying the complexity that we're facing in uh, describing networks, we're going to think about different kinds of, of patterns that there might be. So one is going to be that there's global patterns of networks, so overall big picture items. So how are the different connectedness of, of individuals distributed through the society? Are there some people who are really well connected and, and service hubs and other people who are not so well connected? Or is, is everything very uh, evenly distributed? So that's something. Path links, how far does it take to get on average from one node to another? There's going to be segregation patterns. So if we begin to think of, of nodes as having characteristics, say people's ages, their genders, and so forth, do we see uh, separations between nodes of different types, or are things fairly well integrated? Um, local patterns. Uh, do we see tight clusters of nodes that are all tightly connected to each other, cliques? Do we see that if uh, I'm connected to somebody else and they're connected to a third person, that I also tend to be connected to that third person, transitivity? Um, do relationships often have friends in common? Are they supported? Um, so we'll look at local patterns, a little, uh, you know, zooming in on, on particular parts. We'll also talk about nodes, positions in networks. Uh, so how central is somebody? How influential are they? What does their neighborhood structure look like? So there'll be different ways that we'll be talking about networks overall, and we'll also be looking at nodes and positions in networks and other kinds of things. So there's going to be a series of definitions that we have to go through to, to keep track of these things. So the basics in terms of representing networks, in, uh, there's going to be some set of nodes, vertices, players. Depending on what literature you're looking at, these will have different names. I might go back and forth between the names in the course, so sometimes I'll call them nodes, sometimes I'll call them agents, sometimes I'll call them players, vertices, etc. But there's going to tend to be some finite number, little n will be our, our typical characterization of how many there are. And one basic way of representing a, a network is just by what's called the adjacency matrix. So it's going to be a matrix of zeros and ones, um, so an n by n matrix. And what it indicates is our uh, two nodes connected to each other. So gij equals one indicates a link or a tie or an edge between two nodes i and j. Now, um, generally, uh, unless otherwise stated in the course, we'll be dealing with ones which are not directed, so if I is connected to J, then J is connected to I. So if we're friends with each other, we're both friends, um, it's a mutual relationship. Or if we're allies with each other, we're both allied to each other. It can't be that uh, one country is allied to another and not vice versa. So um, we'll tend to look at it that, that way. Um, and we'll tend to, to work uh, generically with zeros and ones as, as the, the structure of it. So there's either a relationship or not. But um, we could allow for directed networks. We could allow for weighted networks. Um, so when we looked at the uh, financial relationships or the amount of debt that was held um, inside one country of the sovereign debt of another country, that's going to tend to be a directed network and it's going to be a weighted network. So it's going to have different intensities on things. Um, when we think about an alternative notation, it's going to be very useful for representing networks. Sometimes we'll just use, instead of thinking of an adjacency matrix, we'll think of, of representing a graph or a network by just listing all the relationships that are present. So a notation we'll, we'll have is it will say that i and j is in g if that means that there's a link between nodes i and j. So a very simple, succinct notation. We'll just keep track of the sets of, of links that are present and depending on whether these are ordered or not ordered, um, they'll be directed or not directed. Um, so a network is going to be a pair of a set of nodes and either an adjacency matrix or a list of all the links that are present depending on the particular context, which way it's easiest to represent the network. Okay. Um, so basic definitions. Um, one thing we're going to want to keep track of is sort of uh, ways of navigating through a network what are known as walks or paths. Uh, a walk in a network from, say, node I1 to node uh, IK um, is going to be a sequence of nodes, I1, I2, blah, 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 through IK, and a sequence of links. I1 is connected to I2, I2 to I3, and so forth, ending up at K. 
such that each one of those links is in the network, G, okay? So a walk in a network um, from one node to another is a sequence of links that take you from that first node to the last node. Um, so it, often in, in this kind of setting, it's just gonna be convenient to represent it just as the corresponding sequence of nodes such that we know that each uh, subsequent pair are connected in the network G. So in terms of a picture, um, well, uh, before, before I go to a picture, let's also talk about paths, cycles, and, and geodesics. So a walk is gonna be some set of, of uh, links, each connecting to another node, um, but they can possibly uh, cycle back on each other. A path is gonna be a walk where each node is distinct. So we start at I1, we go to a new node I2, then we go to some node I3, which is not in the previous sequence and so forth, until eventually we reach IK. A cycle is going to be a walk where we end up back at the node that we started at. So the end node is the same as the starting node. Um, one other term that's gonna be very useful, geodesic. A geodesic is a shortest path between two nodes. And shortest means we just count how many links there are in that path, and we want to find what's the fewest number of links we need to go from node, say, one to node seven. How many uh, links do we need to get from one to another? So in terms of pictures, um, here's a set of networks on seven uh, nodes, and the first one represents a path and a walk from node one to node seven, right? So we go from one to two, two to three, right? So we start one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven. Okay, so that's, um, that's going to be a path, which is also in this case a walk. Uh, if we look at a walk that's not a path, we could have gone from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five back to three, and so now we've hit three twice and then gone to seven. So that's a, a walk that's not a path. Um, and if we wanted the geodesic in this case from one to seven, then the shortest path would actually have gone just one, three to seven, right? So th this is a path which is longer than a geodesic. Um, when we look at uh, cycles, um, one to two, two to three, three to one, that's a cycle. It's also known as a simple cycle. Um, because it, it just, uh, the only node that repeats itself is the first and last node. And a cycle and a walk, which is a more complicated one, is we could go from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, five back to three, back to one. We've cycled, but we actually cycled through three and one in that case. So it's a more complicated cycle. So these are different terms. We'll talk about cycles as we go through. They're gonna be important. Paths are gonna be important. Walks are gonna be important. So these are distinct items in networks and it's gonna be important to keep this definitions and these uh, terminology uh, in our heads as we go through. So if we wanna count how many walks there are in a network, let's look at a simple example here on four nodes. So this is the network we're looking at. So one is connected to two and four, three is connected just to four, four is connected to everybody. So that is represented here in this particular adjacency matrix. And generally, we're not gonna have nodes connected to each other, so when we look at the diagonal, we'll have diagonal being zeros. Um, there'll be some applications where it's gonna be useful to have nodes connected to each other, uh, to themselves. For instance, if, if we're doing learning, I might be able to learn from myself. Um, that'll be one application where we'll have uh, non-zero entries on the diagonal. But generally, we're gonna have situations where this will be the kind of look matrix we're looking at. Now, if we square this matrix, so we raise it to the second power, so what we're looking at here is, so there's a relationship between one and two captured by this entry right here of a one, and so that indicates that one's connected to two. And so if we ask how many uh, ways there are, how many walks of length two there are from I to J, then the, when we square the matrix, that actually gives us the answer of exactly how many walks there are of length two 
from node um, whatever to whatever. So this is the number of walks of length one. This is the number of walks of length two. If you take it to the third power, you'll get the number of, of walks of length three. And here it says that there's two different walks of going from node one to node one. I could go up to two and then back. I could go to four and back. And you get that by looking, so why is the two coming out in this part of the matrix? When you multiply the matrix, it says I could go from one to two and then two back to one. So that gives us one entry. If I could go from one to four and then four back to one. And when you multiply the matrix, it'll pick up the one times the one plus the one times the one. It gives us a two in this particular entry. So when you multiply the matrix, it gives you how many walks of different path times. So now we've got, uh, you know, paths of length two from each node to each other node. Um, so it's impossible to get from node three to node four in a walk of length two. All the other ones you can get, but actually except, and also from four to three. Um, but all the other ones are possible. And uh, if we keep raising these to powers, then we end up with, um, you know, how many walks of length three from node i to node j, and so forth. And so this is a very useful thing to keep track of because it's going to help us in defining centrality. It's going to help us in keeping track of diffusion processes and other kinds of things where we look at information moving uh, subsequently from node to node in a network. Okay. So um, another thing that's going to be very important to keep track of in a, in a network is its component structure. What are the components? These are the connected subgraphs that make up a network. So we'll say that a, a network NG is connected if there's a path between every two nodes. And a component of a, a network is going to be a maximally connected subgraph. What do we mean by a, a maximally connected subgraph? We're going to mean that the, uh, we look at a subgraph that's a subset of nodes and a subset of the, of the links in the, the network so that we have those being uh, corresponding subsets of the original nodes and original set of links. We want this to be path connected. So from every node i in n prime there, and every node j in, j in n prime, there exists a path in g prime connecting those two. So this is a connected subgraph. And if we look at somebody, uh, some node who's in n prime, and any link in the original network, then any link that uh, we find in the original network, if there's some node j at the end of it, then ij has to be in g prime as well. Okay, and so what does that, what does that mean? Um, in terms of a picture, when we look at components, then this part of the network is a component. But this part of the network is not a component. Why is it not a component? It doesn't satisfy that last part of the definition because we've got five in there, five's connected to one, and yet we didn't include one in our, in our little picture here. So we have to include that, and, and so it's a maximally connected subgraph that would have to include one, four, three, uh, and, and five, and it would have to include all the links there. So a component is going to be a maximally connected subgraph. Another component here would be 2, another component 6 and 10 together with their link, and then 7, 8, and 9 together with their link. So this is a network with four different components, and we can keep track of those. So um, simple concept that's going to be useful in understanding how, um, again, diffusion works, learning, etc., in understanding how separate the, the network is in terms of different component structures. Okay, so uh, that, that does it for this lecture. Um, our next lecture is going to start looking at path lengths and diameters.